Hello, hello, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to Mossy Christmas Cards. Uh, my name is Tara Lynn Pugh, and uh, I'm the owner of Painted Cicada. I am a mixed media artist, and I'm excited to show you um, how to make these fun Mossy cards today. Um, so I want to mention, first and foremost, um, well, actually, let me check and make sure I'm live here before I continue because that would be silly okay yes everything is good to go okay so the first thing I want to mention is that if you are um, watching live with me please give StreamYard permission um, to access your comments uh, StreamYard is a totally safe app that um, a lot of creators use to broadcast um, once you give StreamYard permission you never have to do it again and it lets me see your name in the comments um, hi, Jeannie. Hi, Carrie. How are you? Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Let me turn off this goofy banner. Um, the instructions should be at the top of the post, so I'd love for you to do that. Once you do it, you never have to do it again for another creator. So um, go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do now that I've said hello and introduced myself, I'm going to switch my camera so that you can see my desk. There we go. Alrighty. Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm so glad to see you all hopping on. All right, so let's go over supplies uh, quickly. So we're gonna need some paper to make the cards with. Um, for my actual piece of the card, I just use a piece of cardstock. This is just camera mill cardstock color copy paper um, that I cut down to size, and I'll show you that later. Um, this is the paper I'm going to use for the backing of my artwork. It's just um, plain, um, I don't know what you call it, plain, plain brown craft paper. Um, easy to, ooh, what is going on with my camera? Camera. Okay, <laughs> there we go. It's plain uh, brown craft paper. You could also use, um, basically we're making little pieces of art. You could just use the back of a cereal box. You could use um, packing paper. It, really anything is fine for this. I'm going with kind of a natural brown motif. So that will be my go-to. Um, I have got some green moss. And I've avoided getting this out of the package because it is kind of <clears throat> crumbly. So I bought mine in the form of a moss ribbon. Um, this moss is fairly easy to find. Um, you can get it in sheets or you can get it in ribbon form. Um, but it became really popular when the fairy garden um thing kind of happened and everybody was making those little fairy gardens so this is easy to find at michael's hobby lobby um even the dollar store i think now carries this mossy garden film yes happy thanksgiving everybody happy thanksgiving all right so you need paper for your cards um some sort of moss we're going to use this for the trees um, I've got burlap to use for accents. So uh, burlap comes in a lot of different ways. I've got some sheets. Um, burlap also comes in the form of like ribbons. So I've got this burlap. Um, I've got this burlap. Um, and then ribbons and strings. I've just got kind of a, a variety bag here. Um, probably will use this jute string since I'm going natural but um like here's an old ribbon that I kept for something that would match really well the fun about mixed media is you can really use anything so um just look around your house I've got some washi tape that was I didn't put that on the list that was optional um I've got a bag of buttons I don't know if I'll use those but just to give you an idea like really anything you you spy that you think matches, you can use. So uh, I just encourage you to get kind of random with your choosing of your supplies. And 
Let's get started. Hi, Anne. How are you? Thank you. My haircut's a little crazy. I think I was I was going for Pat Benatar, I think. I was feeling the 80s kind of strong this month. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to make enough for myself to make eight cards, but I'm just going to fold this in half. I don't mind creases and things um, on my lines, so I just do it this way. You can always measure your paper out and... And draw lines if that works for you. So what I'm going to do here, this is just going to be the backing of my little pieces of art. So I'm going to cut these. And then what I'll do at the very end, I'll just show you kind of how I have it um, measured out. So I am just going to adhere this onto a card backing later when I'm finished. So that's kind of the plan for that. I don't know why my camera is going in and out of focus, but I can tell you that I've had about enough of it. And uh, I've got a new camera on my Amazon wish list that's going into my cart today or tomorrow or Black Friday whenever it goes on sale. Take that camera. I'm talking to you. So if you're creating with me today, I don't know that I'll be able to make eight cards in the time that I'm with you, but... You're better to have more than to not have enough. All right, so just cut a little rectangle. Um, any size is fine. Oh, Deb, that's a great question. So Deb wants to know if anybody has started their Thanksgiving cooking. All my cooking is done. I ordered from Bob Evans this year. <laughs> so um, all I have to do is heat it, reheat it. I cheated. Hi, Carrie. Oh, so the camera that I have, I don't even know what it's called. It was an Amazon special. I think it's, um, I don't even know. I don't know what the brand is. It doesn't say on it. It's worked really well. It was, it was nice for me to start my business with this camera, but um, I am going to upgrade to the Logitech Brio, um, which isn't super expensive but it's been on my wish list for a while. All right, so we're going to start. Um, I'm going to show you a few different ways to make the cards, but the first one I'm going to start here, and then um, I'm going to use some burlap. So I'm going to cut, and I've got these burlap sheets, which are kind of fun. And there's no right or wrong to, way to do this. So I encourage you, if you're going to make some cards, just kind of be inspired by the natural um, theme and, and go with it. Because there are so many different ways. I like when I take my burlap and I cut it to just kind of fray the edges a little bit. And once you cut it, it it's, comes apart really easily. kind of get your own creativity out. So I've got some scraps. Um, this is just an old piece of scrapbook paper. And what I'm going to do is measure just a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to trace the edge of this. And then I'm going to cut it a wee bit smaller so that it fits inside. I'm just going to layer. So yeah, 
button's still too big. Kind of peel it out and adjust it. I think this is where my girl Christy would come in handy because she does this stuff all the time. She'd be like, cut it at this many inches, and she's kind of the paper queen. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so these burlap sheets I actually did get with scrapbook paper and they've got a scrapbook, like they've got a paper um, backing, so they're good to use for card making, for scrapbooking, um, and craft projects. Um, and they were about the same price as, you know, a similarly sized pad of scrapbook paper would be. You can also get burlap um, in the sewing section of most craft stores, like Joann's has it, um, Hobby Lobby has it like over by the um, ribbons and um, those materials, you can get burlap there too. So um, yeah, I like these because they're, they're so much easier to glue and paste onto things because they have that backing. But that's optional, like I do have burlap that's just, um, I've got so much stuff on my desk, y'all. Okay. Like this burlap just comes in a ribbon form and it comes bigger too. Like you could get it, um, you know, in a three or four inch wide ribbon and just use that as well. So totally flexible. Um, now we get to the Christmas tree part and this is you know, where I think, um, it really comes together. And so I'm just going to cut a piece of this off and I'm just going to kind of eyeball the width here. But I know I want it to fit within there so and I'm just going to cut a tree in my moss here and trees are just super easy triangles. That one I cut really large so I can just kind of whittle it down. And this moss is really kind of um, messy, so just be prepared to clean it <laughs> when you're done working with it. So then I'm just going to put my tree on there. Once you get a size that you like, you're good to go. And then. So I'm just recreating the one in my sample. Um, you can add like ribbon across the tree if you want. Um, I think I'm going to leave the ribbon off the tree on this one. And since I pulled out my buttons, I think I'm going to put a button at the top like a star. And then the glue that I like to use, yes, you could totally frame this. I think they're so pretty. Um, Elmer's white glue, I think, is the perfect craft glue. I don't think anybody has mastered um, glue like white glue. I think this white glue is just perfect. But you could use E6000 as well. Um, use whatever you have. For the most part, Christmas cards I don't think are... Um, highly handled, so whichever way you choose to go will work. And this is super easy, um, and the fun comes in really when you, you decide to use your creativity um, in the materials that you round up, so um, I'm going to show you my two samples, and then I've just pulled some random things, and I'm going to make a few more cards um, that I didn't plan out ahead of time. Just to show you that you can kind of throw, throw a bunch of stuff together. That's kind of the beauty of mixed media, is that you really can get creative in what you try.
So once you get the top of the card the way you like it, um, I am going to add a little bit of ribbon at the bottom. And I'm just going to keep with this natural theme. So this could be a place where um, you, know, you could add a strip of washi across the bottom. You could add, um, let's see, I've got silky ribbon. I've got lace ribbon. So as long as you kind of keep with the same color scheme, it'll look good. Um, so I do have, but that would be pretty. I do have this burlap. I think for this one, I'm going to cut a piece of burlap because I have these burlap bows. Um, and this ribbon, I absolutely love um, this burlap ribbon. I bought a few rolls. I got it at Target and it's my absolute favorite in the um, gift wrap aisle but it's burlap, but it's just got a little bit of plastic sheen to it. So sometimes it's a little sparkly. Sorry if I'm missing your comments. I'm scrolling by. Kind of quickly for me. Hi, Christina. Thanks for hopping on. sample and this was really simple I just used a brown piece of cardstock um, a simple piece of burlap this was an, an extra scrap piece of scrapbook paper that I had so um, just think of the possibilities that you can make using this same simple formula paper burlap paper tree um, and then you add a ribbon at the bottom um, because the scrapbook paper I mean there's thousands and thousands of kinds that you can choose from that would sh kind of shake it up a little bit um, and you can really change the look by changing the ribbon and um, you know you can even put a little message at the bottom and so when the card is complete and dry I just adhere it onto my blank card here and then I've got a completed Christmas card so that is that one um, now the second sample that I used, I used a sheet of music. Um, so reset and get all this stuff out of the way. So I don't know if you have ever seen these, but this is my little craft vacuum here. So I can get all these little crumblies up. So I'm going to start with another one. So I'm just going to do kind of the same process and see where it takes me. Um, so this time I'm going to do this. Instead of using burlap for my initial square, I'm just going to choose an old old piece of scrapbook paper again. Um, so I've got this one. This was just from a vintage pack. And then the beauty is, of this is it's got these dots which make line cutting really easy so on my square I'm going to cut out two boxes um, for this one I'm going to use sheet music isn't that vacuum fun? That was a, like an impulse buy. I saw it on sale somewhere and I was like, well, I don't know if I need it, but it sure is cute. But it's actually really great for anything that makes crumbs or like if you are working on something you erase a lot, like eraser dust. I use that thing way more than I thought I ever would. This 
from here. I'm just cutting out some music. Sometimes when I have a piece of paper like this, I'll get out my inks. Um, and I will just distress around the edges a smidge. Oh, that would be great for glitter. I haven't bought like free glitter in a really long time, like the kind you shake on, but that would that would be perfect for that. It's also really good like when you're cutting a lot and you get a lot of those little pieces of paper that you just can't seem to get with your hands. out a lot of supplies. I don't expect everybody to have all of the same supplies. Um, but the idea here is just to think about the different ways that you could do this. So two rectangles. On this one I just darken the edges a bit. If you don't have ink you can always do that with um, colored pencil, whatever it is you've got. Myself out another tree. And so for this tree, I am going to cut out some of this jute and kind of make it. Um, actually, I'm just going to wrap it around and then cut it out. Make it look like there's some decoration on the tree. I'll glue these down. Lace would be another really pretty option if you had some off white lace to incorporate with this. Also, golds um, really look pretty as well. Let me off some of this one just a smidge, just to change it up. So if you get any of these creative little whims, do it. Go for it. Because these little um, tiny changes really make all the difference in just your creativity. Just change it up. You have to work with that twine just a little bit. That's not really twine. Is that called twine? Dupe, string? I don't know what you call it. And so this is going to be music card number one. And while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, I'm going to make um, music card number two. And so what I'm going to do with this one is I am just, um, I'm actually going to cut an entire background out of this music sheet. And 
this would be fun for Christmas cards if you've got the music for like Oh Holy Night or you know any Christmas carols. Um, oh, Christmas tree would be cute since we're working with the Christmas tree. I just like the look of that old vintage paper. I know that happy Thanksgiving. So the difference between these two is that instead of using the music as my small background, I'm going to use it as my large background. And then I'm going to find a piece of um, plain paper to use um, for my rectangle. So I've got this, um, I'm just going to cut a smaller piece up here. This is just textured scrapbook paper. And a lot of this is just scraps from things I've used in the past. So I really, other than the moss, I didn't buy anything new for this lesson. So I encourage you just to round up some stuff, some old stuff, see what you have laying around. Yes, Deb, I think I'm going to highlight that. I think that um, the reason why I am drawn so much to mixed media is because I love getting creative with stuff and just finding what I have around the house and giving it a new purpose. Um, I throw away so much stuff and <laughs> I hate throwing away stuff um, because I know I can use it again sometime. And so this is kind of a fun way, you know, like if you've got old wrapping, if you've got um, tish, old tissue paper, um, if you newspaper is a great thing to use for stuff like this. Um, old cards. It's amazing what you can come up with with what you have if you're just not afraid to give it a go.
different. So that's two different ways you can use um, music sheets. Um, actually, I don't know if you guys have, um, I mean, sometimes I can find them at thrift stores like Goodwill. Sometimes I find them at yard sales. Um, but if you've got a used bookstore, they're great for sheet music. Um, because a lot of kids or people who take lessons will have to buy this music. And I never use it again, so they try to get rid of it. But I get a lot of sheet music that way. All right, so those are two more cards. And that brings me through all my samples. And so these have some... Um, oops, did I glue that on? I didn't glue that on. That was silly. That brings me through my samples. And now I'm just going to do a couple that I didn't plan for just with some randomness. So the real focus of these cards is the moss. And you can pretty much do anything. If you cut that tree out, it's going to look like a Christmas card. Mm -hmm. So here's another piece of paper I pulled out. I really like this one because it's got that gold um, embossing on it. So I'm going to try to use that. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I can't lie. That burlap is my favorite. I don't have much more of it. To be honest, I've been using this burlap a lot with some of Amy's lessons that she's been doing. <laughs> because she is kind of my mixed media sister. She does a lot with the natural look and the vintage look. here with burlap. And I'm just pulling these edges because I like the rough edge look. And I was going to tell everybody again where to get this. Um, this moss uh, sounds weird but it's fairly easy to find um you can find it at joanne's like in the wreath making section over by the the fake flowers um hobby lobby has it over um in like with all their ribbon and natural materials like where you would get eucalyptus and that kind of stuff um they've got this moss and then um I almost said Frank's. Oh my gosh. Does anybody remember Frank's, the craft store? Yeah. That makes me feel old. Um, Michael's has it as well. And they have it over um, like by the the ribbon and, and wreath making stuff. Um, like where you would get picks and fake birds and all that stuff for wreaths. So that's where you can find that. Sarah, I'm doing good. My husband's home today. We ran out to get lunch together, which is, it was nice. And life is good over here. Good, good, good. I kind of like when there's uh, just a, just a position um, between really fine edges and ripped edges and grunge and elegant things. So I'm going to tear this so that I don't have nice clean edges just to show you that's kind of an option too. And this moss is super awesome. Yeah, once I, I, I think I, I mean, I don't think I came up with the Christmas tree idea, you know, these cards, um, 
I wanted to teach you because I wanted to make my own Christmas cards this year. Um, but this moss is one of those things where I never thought I would use it as much as I do. I end up using it more than I ever thought. And it goes pretty far. So um, I clipped off one square about this big and I've already gotten three trees out of it. So if you're kind of smart with how you use it, it goes pretty far. And I do think they have it at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's the same. Like this is um, actual dried. I don't know if it's real dried moss. But I'm sure they have artificial moss. This feels real to me. This looks and feels fairly real. Do you probably buy different kinds? I would actually bet that if you bought... Like if you got an artificial moss, it's probably not quite as messy. <laughs> Mine is pretty messy here. I'm going to set this one aside to dry and put something at the bottom for these. This time I think I'll get out my washi tape. I'm just going to put a strip of washi tape right across the bottom of this one. And I think this is Tim Holtz washi tape. It's just kind of real vintage looking. So I'll put washi tape at the bottom. Um, I might cut out a word and put like Mary or something. Do that one. I don't know that that's long enough to tie into a ribbon. Hi, Stephanie, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving. Hi, Tracy. Happy Thanksgiving. So I think what really makes these cards work is when you have a nice balance of like really um, fancy, pretty things. Like this is a velvet ribbon. Um, I've got some gold embossed paper here and then these natural things. I think when you find a balance between the two, they really turn out nice. good at making bows. Honestly, I just make those shoelace bows. It's about as fancy as I can get.
Oh no, I'm so sorry you had a migraine. What a bummer. I used to get those all the time. And I don't know what changed. But thankfully I haven't had one in a while. Migraines are the worst. Thanksgiving. I hope this is, if anybody gives these a go, I would love to see them. Um, and just so you know, like if you don't have moss, like uh, silky green ribbon would be really pretty as well to make these trees with. Um, if you've got um, any textured scrapbook paper in green, they would be really, really pretty as well. Um, if you did a pour painting with different colored greens and then cut them into trees, um, you do not have to use the moss. But I think um, if you use kind of this um, template here and change it up with what you have or what you can get your hands on, you can really make some pretty, pretty options. You could absolutely paint burlap green. Um, if you're willing to paint something that you have green, you open up your options to like not even buy anything. This is such an, um, I don't want to say easy, but once you get going, you're like, ooh, I can do this. Ooh, I can grab that. Um, you can really make these with so many different things. So I've got four very different cards. Um, just by shaking it up a little bit. So this one you can't really see the sheen, but it's really pretty silk ribbon. I don't know how I feel about that. You can see the glue through it. I know the glue is going to dry clear, but I don't like seeing that glue pattern. So I might need another layer of something when it dries, if I can see that glue. Yes, these would make really cute gift tags too. Um, absolutely. And I love homemade gift tags. I got a few things last year. Last year, maybe it was the year before. Um, from people who handmade, or I don't know if they handmade it or they bought handmade gift tags, but they were really, really cute. Another thing you can do, so I'm going to take all these, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm going to glue them onto a piece of um, folded paper to make my card. Um, but you can repurpose old cards um, by doing this. 
you can buy, you know, they have a, you know, those packs of like 10 or 12 at the Dollar Tree for a dollar um, with a sentiment on the inside already. And then if you just paint over the front cover with white or completely paint it with black or whatever, just, you know, make a solid background. Um, then you can glue these right onto an existing card as well. So there's lots of different ways to make them. This one needs to dry a little bit. But they're kind of fun. They feel good to make. Of all of the supplies I've been using, this burlap ribbon has been giving me the most trouble. I just need to put something heavy on there for a minute. I don't know what I've got that's heavy around here, but my water cup's going to have to be it. I don't feel all that talented sometimes. I just feel like I've got too much stuff and need to use it. Here's another piece of scrapbook paper I've got. I use the burlap as kind of the outside piece. For this one, I'm going to use it as the inside piece. I'm kind of the worst at cutting straight lines. Shut this card and then I'll start putting them on that backing and making them into actual cards. Um, but you basically get the idea. We're just creating layers with different textures, and that's the key. You want different colors, patterns, and textures. Um, and as long as you have that going for you, they turn out really pretty. So I don't know if y'all are familiar with this, but this is called Liquid Pearls. It's really hard to see because lighting in here. Ranger Liquid Pearls. Um, and it reminds me of like the puff paint I used to have when I was a teenager. Um, but I'm just going to use this um, to add some ornaments. 
and the mossy tree. So don't be afraid to add glitter, sparkle, shine, whatever you want to. So many different options. I even think like they sell these little bottles. Um, this is glitter glue. Um, up by the register at Michael's. So if you're looking for glitter, that's an option. And I think um, those liquid pearls, um, also stickles comes in um, Stickles is another brand, but it also can come in these little bottles as well. So here's a card with some lace. This one is just giving me so much trouble. And what I do is I kind of am going to let this first, um, you know, there's like a first round of glue and it, it might make the paper warp and it might make some things bend and, and move a little bit. Um, and that's okay. Um, what I'm going to do when all of this dries is I'm just going to put, um, you know, put them under a book. I'll flip them upside down and kind of let them um, get nice and flat. And then like this one up here was my first one. So this is dry. Um, so once I get it nice and flat resting under a book, I'm just going to glue it right on here. Or I can glue it on here and then let the whole dang card just sit under a book. And usually, like, I'll just let it sit overnight and it flattens out fairly easily just by letting it sit. And I think once you actually add it to the card backing, that's when it looks finished and really pretty. And so it's such a simple idea. Most of this stuff costs me next to nothing or it's left over from an additional project. And now I can open up and personalize the card. So that is my completed card up there. I think I probably just want to add a little fun down here to my cards. This needs to dry. Like this one, I just added the word Mary. I think he's finished. I can probably add him to my background here. So I am finishing up this lesson. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you watched on the replay, I always forget to say this in the beginning, please let me know that you watched on the replay. I love seeing who hops on. And if you make Christmas cards this year from this mossy idea. I would love to see them. Please share them in the group. That's my favorite part of doing lessons in here. Oh my gosh. You guys hear that? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. My cat is so in my room coughing up a hairball right now. And there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Stub, thanks for sharing my page. Again, I'm Tara with the Peanut Cicada. I hope everybody has a fantastic and happy Thanksgiving. So 
but this is what I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. Um, not giving away any big secrets, but I can tell you that if you are in um, my mixed media club, you might see these sometime very soon, like in your mailbox, just saying. Make cards. Show me your cards. I can't wait to see them. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving, everybody.